Renee interviews Daniel Garcia. He does not want to talk about Chris Jericho. He does not want to talk about Sammy Guevara. He wants to talk about himself, how over he is, how football teams are doing his dance, it's how he keeps going viral. Don Callis interrupts, says, I want to talk just about that. I want you to know that the Don Callis family will be a utopian meritocracy. <laughs> Garcia shuts him up, does his dance in his face, and walks out. This only makes Don want him more. Wow, Don says. That's money. That's money, Renee. Money. <laughs> uh, an amazing, amazing man. Nick Wayne and Darby Allen versus Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange. I was just happy reading Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange getting a match on TV. They don't do that very often. At least not on Dynamite. Well, then it all went awry. And it was not the best match ever. So it was I mean, just a short little TV match. They squeezed a lot of stuff in the short little it TV match. It was going match. fine. And then there was a spot where um, Darby got a hot tag. Nick tagged in and hit the springboard stunner. And Daddy Magic broke it up. Right. And then... Daddy Magic appeared to forget what he was supposed to do. And so time stood still for a while. And then I believe that Daniel Garcia was supposed to rush down to ringside. Oh, really? And he forgot. Well, he certainly was not there. So, and this is fucking, like, I I live in a simulation. I don't know about the rest of you, but I for sure do. Because what happened next, as God is my witness... Darby Allen then did the exact same fucking thing that Mongo did in the match with Goldberg <laughs> on the Thunder that we randomly fucking watched this week. Wow. He went running. He vaulted over the middle rope to the apron and then leaped off exactly like Mongo did. And I think that he was supposed to... Uh, I, I, I What I think happened... Well, I, I'm, I'm almost positive I know what happened. Okay. Garcia was supposed to be there and he was supposed to take him out. But since he wasn't there, Daddy Magic had to run over. That is absolutely what and happened. And wasn't in the yeah. right spot. And so Darby had to change everything that he was doing. And so then Nick goes up top and Nick's got to do a fucking moonsault. And uh, there's supposed to be two guys to catch him, but apparently there's only one at the moment. So he jumps and all of a sudden you see Daniel Garcia fly in from the back sprinting and he gets in there to catch Nick and then Darby comes off the top with a coffin drop and it was actually a miracle that they made it through this thing the way that they did a miracle actually because I think that probably 70 80 percent of the people watching didn't even know anything went wrong but a lot did there I, I saw I spotted there was something hinky on that Darby dive he said so, something was somebody was not where they were supposed to be I literally did not realize Daniel Garcia had even run out there until you told me just now. Oh, yeah. You see him at the very bottom <laughs> left-hand side of the screen. Yeah. This body. Because when it first happened, I was like, who the fuck is that? Did they just get, like, a security guy to help catch it? I could not figure out who this person was. And it was, uh, it was Garcia. So Christian Cage was on commentary. And seeing Nick and Darby win infuriated him. So he cuts a promo. Says he demands more bikini pictures of Nick's mom on Instagram. He is sick of hearing about Darby Allen and Sting's big win at Wembley. It was an embarrassing loss, he notes, although not as embarrassing as losing to the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati crowd boos. But he wants to make it clear he was not the one who took the loss, and he did not have his regular partner, so he is challenging Darby and Sting to face himself and Luchasaurus at Grand Slam. Which leads us to the full Grand Slam card that match, I'm assuming it's on, Darby and Sting versus Cage and Luchasaurus. John Moxley versus Ray Phoenix, Soraya versus Tony Storm, Claudio Castagnoli versus Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho versus Sammy Guevara, and MJF versus either Samoa Joe or Roderick Strong. And two matches official for Wrestle Dream: Swerve versus Hangman, and of course Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. And in the main event, Roderick Strong and Samoa Joe. <laughs> this whole the match. The post-match, the more post-match that kept going, I dropped an F-bomb on Observer Live today. I was so excited talking about all of this. This was one of the best last 20 minutes of Dynamite ever. It was so awesome. And it wasn't just the wrestling, but it was the post-match with Roddy and the Kingdom 
And Joe, oh my God, this was the greatest. So the match itself, we'll start with that. We hadn't even pointed, talked about this much, but MJF is the champion, and MJF is a babyface. So to make it uh, more plausible, either finalist might win. They booked two heels in the finals. So it's a heel versus heel main event, which rarely works. But Roderick Strong and Samoa Joe are awesome. And so it worked great. Roddy, I, I, I feel like I praise him every week in the show, and I never say enough good things about him. He was fighting from underneath the entire time. Even when he had the heat, he was so frantic. Do not let Joe get a moment to breathe. Don't let him get a, a, a slightest edge of offense or he'll you're doomed you're doomed he's he's smothering joe at every at every at every chance he's he's terrified joe may take over the match and once joe takes over the match roddy may be doomed so eventually joe like thanos is inevitable he makes his comeback and i'll curse in this show the way these fuckers were moving and roddy always moves like this and i joe is a big big man although i will say but both joe and roddy great physical shape great aesthetic shape based on each man's individual standards. So Joe is running wild, catches Roddy in the, the, with the urinagi out of the corner, calls for the muscle buster, but he's distracted by Mike Bennett. Roddy gets an Olympic slam and the sick kick for two. He tries the sick kick again, but he runs right into a big lariat. He was trying a jumping knee. It, yes. And Joe lariated him out of midair. Regardless, what he tried failed. Choked him out immediately. Ah! Uh. That was the end of was Roderick so, Strong for this so evening. was so sad. But the match was bloody awesome. It was absolutely great. Great wrestlers doing some great wrestling. Can't say enough good things about it. So Samoa Joe calls out Max, who, as we noted, is not there. He promises to take everything Max has. Everything. He storms to the back. So the kingdom's in the ring. Taven and Bennett. And uh, Rise in the ring, getting to his feet. They're trying to put the neck brace on. Roddy's resisting now. But out comes Adam Cole in his Brochachos for Life shirt. Yes. Not the message Roddy wanted to see. Roddy looks over his shoulder. I'm going to say this again. Roddy looks back over his shoulder. Yes. The guy with the bad neck. He sees Cole coming. He takes a bump. Yes. And he screams. The stretcher is brought out. Brought out. Adam! My neck! Adam! <laughs> Dying. There. <laughs> they bring these geeks out to to check on him. And Adam Cole hasn't quite figured out what's going on. So he's in the ring. He thinks that this guy's really got a broken neck now. And he's trying to get in to see Roddy. And the kingdom is holding him back. This is your fault! And as they're, they're holding him back, Roddy is just repeatedly screaming, Adam! Adam! And... Cole's trying to get in there, and Bennett's pushing there, pushing him back, and then Bennett screams, I am very concerned! <laughs> oh, yeah. Died. Oh, my God. And then, you know, they're they're putting him on the thing, and they've got the whole, they put the neck brace on him, and they're they're carting him away, and he's just screaming, Adam! And they, they start getting him to the back, and then, you know, Cole's on the, on the, the ramp, and he's screaming at the kingdom, and they're screaming back. And that's when fucking Joe flies out again, and he chokes Adam Cole unconscious, and then he screams in the camera, I told you, I promised I would be taking everything! And between the phantom bump and grabbing the neck and the fucking kingdom being so unbelievably awesome in this segment, and, and Cole, he's just, he's oblivious to all of this of what's going on, apparently, that's the story, and uh, the match itself... And, I mean, it was just so great. It was, I want to know who's responsible for this. Because that person needs to go to the Hall of Awesome. <laughs> so, Golly. So you mentioned Mike Bennett being very concerned. And we all know this because he shouted, I'm very concerned. <laughs> I am very concerned. Well, while choking back tears, mind you. Yes. <laughs> Taven is more angry. This is all Adam Cole's fault. He would have been fine if you hadn't come out, he says. So they're wheeling him like... Next to the ramp, off to the side of the ramp on the floor. And and, and and Roddy's got his eyes like squeezed shut like this. He's going, Adam, I can't see you. <laughs> yes. Do we put this guy into the Hall of Awesome yet? Because if we haven't, now's the time. So Cole's trying to follow. But Taven and Bennett block his path. 
So Cole jumps up on the ramp, and they run around to block him from there. And then Cole's left hanging, and that's when Joe chokes him out, screaming, I told you I was going to take everything, Max. He has started with his best friend. This show was awesome. A lot of stuff going on here, and it was all great. This show was great. Yeah. And I, I, again, I can't say enough great things about Roderick Strong. The guy's the man. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.